Welcome to Mind Pump, the world's number one ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. That's right. We've been voted that 500 times in a row. At least. Maybe. (laughs) This episode, we answer uh, fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers just like you. But the way we open the episode is by talking about current events. We talk about studies. We have some fun conversation. So I'm going to give you a breakdown of the whole episode. By the way, if you want the episode timestamped so you can just fast forward to your favorite part, go to Mind Pump Podcast. Dot com. All right, here's the breakdown. We open up by talking about Adam's tech surprise. Uh, so he gives us a little surprise about tech. Yeah. Um, then we talked about the Pluto Pillow and how it's helping everybody sleep really well. Pluto Pillow is a company. Uh, you go on their website and you customize according to your height, the way you like your pillow to feel, if you like to sleep a little warmer, a little cooler. You can customize your own pillow, get it delivered to your door, and you will experience the best sleep you've ever had in your entire life. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 10% off your first order. Here's what you do. Go to plutopillow.com. That's P-L-U-T-O, pillow.com forward slash Mind Pump. And then use the code Mind Pump for that discount. Then we talk about a restaurant owner. Uh, he owns a restaurant called Restaurante de Maria. See, I said it right yeah, there. Yeah, I was hoping you would. The owner's name is George. He showed uh, uh, Justin and Courtney and family yeah. a really good time because they've been evacuated from the house through the fires. If you guys uh, are around that restaurant, make sure you go there. Tell me Please listen to Please support him. He's awesome. Buy a lot of food. Then I talked about uh, my daughter and the wonderful compliments I got from other parents. Almost made me cry. All right. Then we had a great conversation about supplements back in the day. They were way more powerful back then and more dangerous. Hmm. Then we talked about Walmart potentially buying TikTok. That's cool. Adam talked about Bella Thorne and her fans only page. Are you subscribed? Uh, yeah, it might be. Then I talked about my buddy who's a Dodger fan throwing away his Dodgers uh, stuff, his clothes and hats. He's a lifelong fan. Wow. Sports is pissing people off a lot these days. Bold move. Then we talked about the Call of Duty trailer, which was a little weird. Uh, we talked about a show called Hard Knocks on HBO. I talked about Adam's cookie dough protein balls. They're delicious, slightly salty peanut butter balls made with Organifi's vanilla protein. You just want to put it all in your mouth. You you can fit all of them in your mouth. If you go to the Organifi Instagram page, they have recipes on there. Now, Organifi is a company that we work with that makes organic supplements. My favorite is their protein powder. There's no dairy in there, no gluten, so it's easy to digest. It's got a great amino acid profile because they combine different vegan sources of protein because single-sourced vegan proteins are not as good. Um, They also have a green juice, which is great if you miss your vegetables. They have a red juice that can give you a good pre-workout stimulant that doesn't have stimulants, so there's no caffeine in it. Anyway, go check them out. And because you listen to Mind Pump, use our discount. All you got to do is go to Organifi.com. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and you'll get 20% off at checkout. Then we talked about the most regretted college majors. And I talked about a man who found out his wife was having an affair by using Google Maps. Oops. Then we got into the fitness uh, portion. This is where we answer fitness questions. Here's the first one. What are the most chronically undertrained muscle groups for most people? The next question, this person wants to improve their stamina and endurance for mountain trekking, but also likes to lift weights. What's a good balance? The next question, what actually constitutes processed foods? Because we talk about how processed foods tend to make people gain weight. What are processed foods? Well, actually, Sal. And the final question, uh, have we ever seen clients or others use faith to battle gluttony? Also- 72 hours left for the Mind Pump MAPS uh, Performance 50% off sale. So MAPS Performance is a workout program designed to help you build muscle, burn body fat, become faster, improve your stamina, speed, and your mobility. It is a workout program that uses traditional and non-traditional exercises. Many people say it's the most fun MAPS program that we have because it's so different. It's also the only MAPS program that has a power explosive phase. At the end of this program, there's a whole phase with plyometrics and explosive power. Um, It's a great program. It's half off. You got three days left to take advantage of this promotion. Here's what you do. Go to mapsgreen.com. That's M-A-P-S-G-R-E-N.com and use the code GREEN50. That's G-R-E-E-N-5-0, no space, for the discount. I was talking to someone the other day about like... um 
unintended consequences of becoming so dependent on tech. You know, like Sal, you know, I've talked about this. I remember I challenged you when you said that I just some terrible directions. And I'm like, I'm just as bad as you, but oh, yeah. I don't think that I was always that way. Like mm. I wasn't that way until what is it? Tom, Tom or whatever was the first one that really came out. Mm -hmm. mm. So I was talking about like these, this was a conversation. And I think when you, when you, talk about things like this. It's kind of like when you talk, get a new car and then you see the car all the time, like shit starts happening to you. So last night I'm putting Max down and I, uh, so Katrina, first of all, puts his room like pitch black. Like we have the double blackout curtains in there. Like she's like adamant about like not a single night light. That's any. good. Yeah, yeah. She will pitch, pitch black in there, which, you know, okay for, uh, that's great. I agree, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but also very difficult to walk around in and, and see shit. And so but we have that. You don't know where the monsters are coming from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we have that, uh, camera, right? So it's last got night, night vision on it, doesn't it? Yeah. So okay. it has night vision on it. So you could totally see him clear on the camera. So, but then the glow from my phone will like distract him and like, he'll know I'm in the room and wake him up. So I set him down last night and you know, I normally, what I do is I, I like, we're teaching him to go down awake. Like he's past that age where you rock him to sleep yeah. every single night. Now it's like, Hey, it's bedtime. And you set him down and you, you know, try and get him to relax. And so I'm setting him down. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll, I'll set him down. Then I'll go sit down on the rocking chair and I take the the iPhone and I and I put it under my 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 shirt and then tuck my head under and then I'll I'll like watch the camera like uh, it, with my with my head like in my wait shirt. while you're in the room yeah while I'm in the room oh, so uh, I can so I can see what he's doing you know like yeah. is he and and I'll watch and see if he's you know sometimes I can tell he's like teething and so I'll give him something that he can teeth on or whatever or if I can tell if he's almost asleep so I can sneak out because if I walk out and he's not quite almost out and I open the door, the light comes shining in or like that, It'll then he'll get, you know, he'll wake up. So anyways, uh, to the point, my point, right, of like, you know, being reliant on tech, right? So I'm sitting on this rocking chair and I'm like looking at her and Katrina is also watching him downstairs. So she's downstairs and she's texting me like, you know, oh, he's almost asleep. I'm like, yeah, no, no I'm watching. And she's like, oh, you in the room? The light's probably, I'm like, no, 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 I do it on my shirt. I'm like, so I'm like texting her with under, underneath my shirt and then going back and forth and look at him. Well, I'm, I had, I'm swiping back between the app where I can view him and then talking to Katrina. And this is my point of like, we become so dependent on apps. I freak the fuck out because the app froze and I didn't realize that it froze. And so when I go back from saying Katrina, like, hey, no, he's fine. And then I go back and I look at the camera. He's not in the, in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pitch black. And the, right before that, I heard kind of no. like a, you know, I heard like this thumping sound on the bed. Yeah. So I like shoot up, like, ah, like freaked out. Like he jumped out of the bed or he fell or some shit. And then the camera like unfreezes and he's right there. And then he's like looking up at me, dada. <laughs> so, oh, I still got your shirt over your oh, head. Yeah. Hey, son. Oh, ah, dude. Boogie, boogie. My it's like a scary movie. Like oh. he's not there, and then oh, the yeah. next thing you know, you look oh, and yeah. he's like dude. on your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Oh. He's on the ceiling, just hey dad. My heart, my heart <laughs> stopped, dude. It just I was not we're not ready for that at all. <laughs> just not in the in the bed at all. It does sound like one of those uh the horror movies though, right? Yeah. Where you're looking at that and then the kid like his he's head just gone. You're like, wait a minute, where or is he? He rotates like 180 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what, the hell's, what the hell's going on? Oh, no. Scared yeah, the, the worst part is you don't know anybody's phone number. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I don't know your guys' phone number. Yeah, yeah. I, I call could. you guys all the time. I know like my parents' phone number, and then I know three of my best friends' like f like parents' phone numbers. That's mm -hmm. it. So I don't know still, Jessica's phone number. So I know Katrina's only because this was a big deal to her when we were when we were first dating. You know, we were like three five years in our relationship, and she used to get mad at me. She's like. You don't even know my phone number. We've been together for so long. I'm like, hun, it's like in my phone. She's like, what if you were stranded somewhere and you didn't have your phone and you needed to call me? You couldn't even call me. You know what I'm uh, yeah, you'll remember. I memorized. Yeah, yeah. Courtney. My, so my, yeah, my retaliation to that or whatever, my retort is, I'll remember 911 if I'm in a situation like that. <laughs> oh, that's good. Like <laughs> if, I'm in, if I'm in that big of an emergency, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't need to know your phone number. <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do for me? I just got to remember uh, 911. Yeah. That's the only one. Dude, my dad's the professionals. My dad such a good, uh, said such a good uh, dad joke yesterday. The day. Dad jokes are great. I'm yeah. just going to say that right now. I love them. But anyway, so my dad, he speaks broken English, right? Because he's an Italian immigrant. Yeah. So we're all sitting around. You know, we had dinner. My kids were over there, whatever. And we're hanging out. And uh, dinner's over. And my dad goes to my daughter, goes, Hey, he goes, uh, you, like, uh, uh, you like ice cream? And she goes, Yeah, I li yeah, yeah. I, I like ice cream. And he goes, Ah! 
Dude, we died laughing so hard. Because <laughs> that's how he would say it. Yeah. You, you know? You want ice cream? You know? Uh, <laughs> he started screaming. That's that's and, great. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Sets you up real good. Hey, sleep, speaking of sleep, um, you know, because Jessica's in the third trimester. Her sleep is like really hard, right? It's very yeah. difficult. Yeah. She has to pee pretty much all the time, which is kind of, I, I, for, yeah, I forgot what that was like. Like every 15 yeah, minutes, yeah, yeah. she has to go pee. It's hard to sleep, whatever. So we've done a few things in the room that make a big difference. And uh, the Pluto pillow is, is, is- Is she loving it or what? It's game changer. Yeah. You know what the big thing is, is it stays cool. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the thing uh, that she likes. That's my favorite part. Yeah, because like I said earlier, but I've, I've said before in previous podcasts, her body temperature has become lava. <laughs> and so uh, you should you should see my kids. They wear sweaters in the house <laughs> in the middle of August in California. You like kid, see their breath. Yeah, my kids have blankets. Like, uh, it's cold, Papa. That's beautiful. I'm like, well, you know, and Jessica's like, the AC's broken, and my kids are like, no, 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 it's working. Yeah, it's working just fine. Yeah, uh, the only fight I've even had uh, as of late uh, with all this madness going on it has been over like the fan or the AC, uh, and then the control of like our climate. You know that we're in. Uh, you know at the time because like that's that's such one of those things that just always like pops up because we're so polar opposites in terms of like how you know the 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 temperature that's the most comfortable to sleep in i'm like dude we got to get this thing down i'm not getting any sleep and then if i do it i know she's not gonna get any sleep and so then i compromise the next day and we're back and forth because i don't have my my uh my my go-to stuff dude i don't have my chili uh pad i don't have the pluto pillow i don't have any of that stuff oh did you not get the pluto pillow (laughs) dude this guy he's just Sal's like, of all the things you grab, all the things your house is going to burn down. It? You forgot your Pluto yeah. pillow and your chili <laughs> pad? No, I don't have any of that stuff right now. And I feel it, dude. Like, it's, it's, oh, man. I swear, I want to, I want, I want chili and Pluto both. I think their, their like tagline for sales should be like saving marriages. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because that is the biggest thing of contention at my house, too. It's like we are polar opposites. Last night, again, we were getting into it this morning because I was like, you changed the temperature. I know you did. I was like, yeah. I woke up with a headache and sweating at like yeah. three o'clock in the morning and I and I roll over. She's coming back. I guess Max woke up in the middle of the night and she put him back down and she's coming back to bed and I'm getting up and I'm like, why did you change the AC? She goes, I didn't touch it. And then I stomp downstairs and I get down there and sure shit, it's up two degrees. Right. And I you change it back down and I come down. It was up to 69. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't sleep I, I feel every degree. <laughs> I do. I do. For us. Yeah. yeah. yeah Je- Jessica swears. We, I mean, we had a whole argument about it. Swears that the AC is not working. She's like, no, it's not working. I'm like, honey, the air is coming out. It's cold. No, the temperature hasn't changed. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Even if the AC was broken, the thermometer on it would not be. And it says clearly here that it's 67 degrees in the house. <clears throat> well, why am I so hot? You're pregnant. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that's you're why. really pregnant right now, and that's why you're so hot. <clears throat> anyway. Oh, man. It, we went to uh, this restaurant last night. I had to like bring this up because it was like – I got to a point where I was getting frustrated with just everything going on and like just so many people, I'm losing hope and humanity, you know, for the most part. But we got like this guy, he owns his own restaurant. We were just like, where do we go? And my my kids really wanted pizza. I wanted like Italian food and all this. And I'm like, oh, I'm always like the one dragging my feet for that because of all, you know, the gluten and everything else that I'm going to have to eat. I'm like, you know, forget it. Let's give the kids a win. Let's go to this place. And this place was, um, I don't know if you guys have ever been there before. I think it's called uh, a Restaurante de uh, Maria, I think. And the, the owner's name is George, but I have to give him a shout out because he was like the most kind uh, human being like I've run into, you know, since. Like it was like we got there and like he, we're his only customer. It, 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 they, he basically like adjusted the whole restaurant so you, you come in and you do takeout now but he had like two he just opened up so he had like two tables outside and right next to us like there's this restaurant that was just going crazy it had all kinds of people there like lively and all this stuff and people kind of came in they looked at his restaurant and they went over to the one next to him you know and I was just like I don't know like this I don't know if this place is going to be that great or whatever and so I sit down and like, you know, and he's like definitely an immigrant that started his own business, like super appreciative that we were there, like with the family and everything. We told him why we we're there and the fires and all that. We got in this discussion 
And then, you know, so he takes our org, all this stuff. And then he, he starts presenting us like even more appetizers that we didn't order. Yeah. And he's just like, here, no, I want you to try this. And then I want you to try this. And we got this water that we have on this filtration system. That's like, you know, and it was really good. And we're like, this is your tap water. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, and like he's giving us like cannolis and he's giving us like tiramisu's. It's like out of this world. Oh, good. What a nice guy. And, and we're just like, and he wouldn't like let us pay, you know, at the end, like the tip or anything i'm like no we're getting this fight yeah you know, like straight like i'm like no i'm gonna i'm gonna pay for this he's like no, no no i'm gonna pay for this you know what that's it so my my uncle owns a restaurant and you know he's obviously an immigrant and that's how he always has been with his customers yeah and as a result his restaurants always do well the people love going in he walks around the restaurant as the owner drinks with people sits he'll walk up to someone he knows their name how you doing sits down that's how fortellos is yeah, yeah. brings over you know some yeah. wine or whatever Dude, this is the small business aspect that people don't understand like yeah. is under attack and so i just i i just felt and my kids noticed it and they were just like man that guy was so nice and i can't believe all this stuff he was doing for us and all this and it's like you know we just need we need that right now Every, everybody's so against each other and, and so divisive and it's such it, it's hard man just, people are going through shit uh, right now you know the solution is turn off all your media. Don't watch any news <clears throat> for a week and just yeah. go to, just talk to people. Yeah, and watch what happens. I swear 100%. to God, you start to realize people are not crazy. Yeah, you know yeah. most people are normal. Most people are on your side and really trying to you know have a helpful attitude. Yeah, and they're nice. Yeah. Hey, so you guys know? Uh, I told you guys. You know, obviously, we're still doing the distance <clears throat> learning with the schools or whatever. But we've been organizing these like pods mm -hmm. where the kids will meet up with their, you know, two or three other kids and we're still, you know, we're still following guidelines and all that stuff, but at least they're around other kids rather than being alone in their bedroom doing their school or whatever. And this is the first week we're kind of testing it out. Huge, six, huge success. Oh, good. He, the, the, my daughter, the, the, her attitude is so different. She's so much more lively. Her and her friends are connecting. We've turned what could be a crappy memory for them into one that's a really good one. Mm -hmm. They're really enjoying it. The kids are all getting along. I got some of the best compliments ever, by the way. My, that's why I brought a tear to my eye. Every parent likes to hear from other parents how great their kid is. Of course. You know what I I'm know. saying? Oh, yeah. And so what I hear is from them is, a, oh, your daughter, she's so responsible. She organized the girls to clean up afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> You know, or she's keeping them on tr on You're track like, oh, and yeah. making sure they're. Fo oh yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting the whole like, oh, something's in my eye. You know why they're telling <laughs> I gotta me. Go to the other room. Yeah. So my son too. My son too. I or, you know he organized one with one of his friends. It's funny. So my boy is just turned fifteen, right? This is when like boys change very quickly with the way they look. Yeah. So this morning, I haven't seen this particular friend of his since. Uh, all the the shutdowns. So it's been what six months now. It's been five or six months. Mm -hmm. That's it. Five six months. Just haven't seen this kid, this other kid, for that He's long. Like sprouted up, dude. We I dropped him off this morning, you know, and and you know what? Said hi to the parents. He comes around. Whole it's like testosterone hit his hit his yeah. body all of a sudden. You know, he's got the little bit of the. A little bit of the, the, the whiskers coming out. Voice all changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Sal, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. What's up, buddy? I grew like seven inches over one summer. Wow. I went. I went for that's. What, I went from playing point guard, right? So my freshman year in, in, in high school, freshman and sophomore year, I was playing point, and then sophomore year shooting guard, and then I jumped all the way up to playing like power forward and center and shit because I went all the way up to six foot. But and I was one. Was it a one inches? summer or one year? Yeah, it was like over the over the course of a year in a summer. You Did know, it hurt? Honestly. Did you get? Yeah, growing I was pains? gonna say your legs were they like? All so I didn't achy? get. I don't remember. At least I don't remember. I don't remember growing pains, but I do remember uh, feeling a little awkward. Mm. Like being, I've been an athlete since I was a kid. Like I've been playing soccer since I was probably like seven, six, seven years old. Right. So I've been playing sports forever yeah. and uh, never had I felt out of my body until, until that year. So I definitely did feel different. What it felt like, I kind of, you know, feel this way now, uh, where your brain tells you you can do things, <laughs> but your body just doesn't. It's not, for, for different reasons. Now you're just getting old. It's yeah, not yeah, operating yeah. like it should. Yeah, this now it's because I just I'm getting old, right? It's slowing down, and joints are achy, and you're like, oh, you make noises when you sit down or get up, right? Okay, that's now. Where then it was more like it's just uh, I'm clumsy. You know, I felt like a, a a Great Dane puppy if you ever seen them before. You know, or oh, just yeah. 
kind of wobbly all over the place until you like learn your body and shit. So. Oh, I, I got uh, – did you guys get stretch marks from when you started first working out or growing or whatever? Yeah, my quads like crazy. Yeah, I got – and I remember how happy I was to get – I know that's – apparently stretch marks are a bad thing, right? But nobody oh, wants no, them. I loved it. That and the, and the bicep on the oh, – I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I'm like, it's working. Yeah. yeah. The, you know, the, getting the, huge. The Mega Mass 2000 is <laughs> <laughs> it's all the supplements. Yeah, yeah, but I had them in like in my armpits in the back of my arms. I remember wearing tank tops and like I put my arms behind my head like so people could notice. Like, yeah. yeah. What's that on your like, arm? They're, oh, they're purple. Stretch they're marks. Fresh. They're fresh. Oh, that's a stretch yeah. mark. Because yeah. my chest is getting so massive. It's, it's, all, my, it's all my muscle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, My muscle's growing too fast. Yeah, yeah I weigh 160 now. Anyway. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a whole lot of room left. Uh, I don't know if you noticed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. yeah. I love thinking back to those days when I first got in. I still, I, oh, I, I, Always love working out. It's just my favorite, one of my favorite things to do. But those days were just so special. It was so new. Yeah. Every new exercise I discovered was just so exciting. Working out, every supplement was this cool new thing, and every routine I would follow. You know, I kind of miss those. That's those, interesting those that you have yeah. a view like that. I have a, like a, mine was way more frustrated. I was frustrated, dude. I mean, I remember being a kid and trying everything and just not feeling like I got any sort of response at all. Feeling like I was working so hard to try and gain. I, dude, you know? I remember the first day I worked out in my backyard when my parents finally gave me the green light mm-hmm. that I was able to. I was 14 and I was like begging them all the time. And finally, my mom's like, fine, you're, you're killing us. I remember that first workout. The weights, the iron, putting the dumbbells, they were adjustable dumbbells, screwing the thing on. I remember the first day I went into the YMCA, which was the actual first gym I worked out, using cables for the first time, and then going to 24 Fitness. My very first workout at 24 Fitness, my dad dropped me off, and this is before cell phones and all that stuff, and I told him, he said, when do you want me to pick you up? And I told him, three hours. Give me three hours. (laughs) And he's like, three hours? He goes, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm going to hang out. I'm going to whatever. You know, I was with my cousin. Yeah, give us three hours. We're going to go to the store. But the reality is we literally did everything. Yeah. We did every piece of cardio, <laughs> every single machine. Like, is every, this an ankle uh, uh, thing, yeah. machine? What we bought. This? So we had money because we worked. You know, we used to, I used to wash dishes or whatever, so I had cash. So I went in there. And once my dad left and I, I could be like, oh, I could buy whatever I want. I saw behind the, you know, behind the counter they had all the drinks that looked like they were like, that's going to make me so All the ABB ones? Yeah. Oh, dude. They had yeah. eagles on them. Oh, bro. Yeah. I bought uh, Blue Thunder. Do you guys remember Blue yeah, Thunder? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Blue Thunder was <laughs> what a shitty drink. It had everything. That's yeah. what the, that was its, <laughs> yeah. its calling card. So if you looked at the back and you read it, and I remember this, I remember the, having the poor girl give me every single drink <laughs> so I could pick the right one. And I'd look at the back and I chose Blue Thunder because it had everything. I, I didn't understand that supplement companies would basically put two molecules of each ingredient. Yeah. So it said it had, <laughs> yeah. but it had everything like Smilax, Tribulus, you know, for everything. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm getting that. Bought two bottles. My cousin bought two bottles. Then we bought a bottle of Amino Force 5000 or whatever. Drank those, worked out for three hours, got home, threw up, and then had to, uh, not, I couldn't go to school the next day because I was yeah. so sore. Any idea where that company is today? Do you know? Oh, they still exist. Well, ABB? ABB? Uh-huh. Is it, what is it? What is the acronym? Although I would I, see them in gold. American Bodybuilding. American Bodybuilding. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. Could Had you a picture look, of an eagle. Could you look? Yeah. yeah. Could you yeah. look them up, Doug? I mean, they were. I mean, they were the shit back in the days. I mean, that was the the drink. Yeah, they dr- dominated the gym. Uh, yeah, beverage. You, you don't department. hear nothing about them. I anymore. wonder if they're getting crushed right now. That's why I want to know. I'm really curious to see how they're doing. Like, is, I mean, is it they? Do they still get sold? I don't see them. Used to see them everywhere. Used to see them at Seven Elevens. Used to see them in every gym. Used to see them. Anywhere uh, yeah. where I don't I don't see them hardly ever. Well, they I go to like an old gym. Yeah, oh, there so they they are, are right there. Yeah, it's the same drinks. Look at that. You know, max recovery speed. So they still have speed this stack. Speed stacks. And, but, uh, see if you can like see if you can ripped, find an article fuel. on them, Doug. But, like uh, business wise, just see click on news. I, I just go up to the top and click on news. It'll give you all the articles. I'll tell you what, kids uh, listening to this podcast right now who are younger than I am, the speed stack drink you drink now. It ain't shit. Yeah. Uh, no, the real one, the <laughs> original one had a Fedra. Flavoring in the Fedra it. and caffeine. The one it. that we had yeah. when we were younger was literally drugs. It was speed. <laughs> I mean, it was in the name. It was, dude, it was 20, this is what it was, okay? 25 milligrams of, of, of Fedra of alkaloids. Fedra plus caffeine, plus like 300 milligrams of caffeine. Dude. Caffeine, <laughs> a Fedra alkaloids. So first, yeah. you can't buy you a Fedra. You can see into the future. Yeah, and it had white willow bark, which was a natural version of aspirin. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. numbed your body so you could take all this craziness oh man and uh it made you feel uh crazy do you remember the first time you drank that or took a fed i do what, what, what happened oh i liked it 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I like it. Well, you know, th- that was right in the heart of like my, you know, who what it was uh, introduced to me for, from was a buddy of mine, uh, Mark, who came, like we met when I was 20. Mark introduced it to you? Yeah. Your first time drinking was in your 20s? <clears throat> 20, 22. Oh, man, I'm going to die yeah, early. 22. Yeah. I tried other ABB products uh, before that, like the Max. Like So when, when I was a kid and I first got a gym membership, which was around 19, 18, 19 years old, um, and we were going to Inner Sport in Modesto. So shout out to that gym if it still exists. Inner Sport. Inner Sport. I did work out there once. Yeah. Well, we shot a video there. Yeah, we shot we, the yeah, original. The original Maps Black was shot in my original. Gym. They had they yeah. had the Nautilus equipment with instead of the the cord or the whatever it was chain. Yeah, yeah. Those are the good ones. Yeah, that was yeah. a great. It was you a just great, don't get your finger. Caught it was a now. great gym, but no. the things that I was drinking back then was you know Mass Recovery, Mass Builder, like all the the and those ones are nasty tasting. Oh yeah, hundred grams of dextrose. Oh, they were <laughs> all sugar in there. I didn't drink a lot of speed in thermo, the speed stack, none of those because I knew I was a skinny kid trying to build. I wasn't trying to exactly, take exactly. I didn't try. They, and they take, were fat burners. Yeah, I wasn't trying to take no fat burner or anything that sped, sped up my already super fast metabolism. So I didn't get introduced to speed stacks and the thermo stuff and ephedra until I was about twenty two working with my buddy, and we drank it not before a workout. It was like a work day. Like, we're yeah. going to grind today. We're going to make 100 phone calls. Well, that's how I got introduced yeah. to it. Adam uh, introduced it to me. Yeah, yeah for yeah. work. For not, work. For, not for working out. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I was Before that, though, I, I'll be honest, I, there, there's this thing at, uh, it was called Mini Thins. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, this that's is like the truckers. same thing. The truckers, truckers use it, right? So we, we, we did that a few times uh, but before we trained, but mainly before we had football games. And so you would literally be like foaming at the mouth the first half and then completely crash you know the next half but i had 20 tackles one game like in the first half dude i was going crazy oh yeah yeah uh, that's what happened i remember i had like one of the best work days I ever had i remember looking back at the day going like whoa i nailed a hundred and something phone yeah. calls yeah. I took not six, healthy kids I took six fits i trained like six clients i'm like it's like a 14 hour day and i'm like i'm good no <laughs> i i read an article by it was a muscle media 2000 which back that was bill phillips and that was back in the day when uh bill phillips this is before EAS, right? Before he started EAS. And Muscle Media 2000, in those days, <laughs> you had a bunch of bodybuilding magazines and muscle building magazines. This is before the internet, right? And each, you had kind of different markets in that space. And Muscle Media 2000 catered to the hardcore, kind of edgy black market muscle builders. So it talked about steroids. It talked about the latest chemicals and the new supplement that might get banned and you know what the pros really do. So of course, which magazine do you think I'm gonna like? I'm, I'm going to that one. I'm like, this has got the secrets. Like, yeah. I don't know, the stuff is fake. This is for real. So I read that. and I read an article, and it was about Ultimate Orange, which is the first pre workout. And Ultimate Orange had ephedra in there. Better and, than Agent Orange. And I read, yeah, I read about ephedra, and like you, Adam, I was skinny, and it said, oh, great fat burner, this and that. Yeah, yeah. But then I read this article, and it said the most crazy intense focus you'll have your entire life. Super intense. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, studies show that lifters lifted ten or fifteen percent more weight because it is it's very no, that's, strong. That's what got you. Yeah, so I'm like, oh really? I'm like, this is cool. So ephedra. Then I'm like, what about caffeine? Then I went and I got a chemistry book at the library, and I said, I'm going to learn about these uh, these these uh, these alpha uh, the, this particular receptor that the chemicals attached to. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> How I'm old gonna, are you when you decided to do this? Um. We're so opposite. Maybe sixteen. Or this is where we're. This is where we're totally different. Oh yeah, you were. You <laughs> yeah, were. Like, hey, try as much as I can, and then I'll, I'll report yeah, back to you, you on were, how I feel. Yeah, you were. Yeah. You, were you were trying to feather your hair the right way. I was, I was looking at. I was looking so at. I was like, I'm gonna go with the library, and I'm gonna get a yeah. book, chemistry book and yeah, figure this yeah, out. Hey, yeah. that's all. It's all good. Yeah. So that's why we make good partners. So I looked. Chemicals. So I looked up these receptors, and I real. I learned about Yohimbi, and Yohimbi, basically, if if one chemical raises the the heat of a thermostat. The other one turns the thermostat off, so it just keeps going up. So I'm like, this is going to be a great combination. I'm going to get ephedra, caffeine. I'm going to buy some aspirin, and then I'm going to take Yohimbi with it. It's going to be freaking fire, right? This is 16-year-old no, like chemistry experiment, right? Took all those supplements together, went to the gym, rode my bike to the gym, and worked out like I was possessed. I remember this like, oh, look, this is amazing. <laughs> Anyway, two hours later, I couldn't come down. I remember I came home and I sat on the edge of my bed, sweating and feeling my heart rate. And I, I was putting my hand up to my heart. I remember thinking like, 
man, my mom's gonna be so mad when I die. Like this is not gonna be. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. So I laid down and tried to like calm myself down, and then finally I was able to calm. That was my last time combining all those. That's things. a horrible don't, feeling. Don't man. combine those supplements. Uh, did you guys hear the you uh, news now? So Walmart is now putting their their name in the hat for TikTok. So they're starting to bid on them. Ooh, trying to court. Uh, meanwhile, China's like, ha, ah, we got all the information already. Like, <laughs> hey, cool, pay us for it now. So that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. I know, yeah. Right? yeah. Like what? Who like, gets the last laugh in this yeah, one? Yeah, who gets right? the last laugh? I mean, yeah, sure, people will still use it and do their little dances and whatnot, but you know, like, come on, like, what, are we, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, can I tell you the, that? What? So TikTok annoys the shit out of me. But why is it that so many medical professionals use TikToks? That's just I see all these doctors and nurses. Yeah. In their forties, and they're well, like what dancing it, and pointing to no, stuff. No, what it is is that I mean, this what is are you doing? it's the you know it, I blame it on Gary V. That's who I blame it on. I said because <laughs> everybody respects Gary Gary V. as an entrepreneur because he's a badass, of course, and I, and I and I love for Gary sure v. he is. Yeah, yeah, I love Gary V. Uh, and but I, you you get him someone like that who influences so many other entrepreneurs, and he, he tells everybody, oh, Bless you. Bless you. <clears throat> excuse me, yeah, the COVID, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the cough, Boy. so. Gary Vee tells everybody, you know, to, that they need to get on TikTok because it's the next big platform to explode. So, you know, all these, you know, physicians and, and entrepreneurs that are that are in their 40s, like you're alluding to, Sal, you know, they're trying to figure it out. They're getting on all the social mm -hmm. media platforms. I mean, we weren't much different, you know, five, six years ago. So when you think about us, none of us were big Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, podcasting oh, guys. Oh, I fought against it. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, you, you resist. We all resisted it quite a bit. I, I What I think is funny is that they hear that from like Gary Vee and then they just start doing it with like no real rhyme or reason or understanding how, how the platform works or how will this actually translate into leads. It's just like, oh, if I can get attention yeah. Yeah. on this platform. And I, I hear that the algorithm for TikTok, who did I see talking about this? I saw somebody talking about... TikTok does it different than like, like Instagram makes it difficult for people to find you or even your own people that are following you to see everything that you mm. are posting in your feed. So it's a little more, uh, you know, exclusive, I guess you would say. And TikTok is more like you get a lot more likes and views. It's a lot easier. Mm. So I think what what you see is some of these 40 year olds that have never getting lots of attention. Yeah. Like, they, Ooh, they like this. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, they get a lot of likes or a lot of follows all from these 13 year olds. <laughs> yeah. I know all the 13 year olds and <laughs> things. Like, you know, speaking of social uh, uh, media and influencers and things like that, do you guys know who Bella Thorne is? Yeah. Oh, oh, did you see this? I, I no, didn't I didn't see, see this. this, but I know I, I know about her. I know she she she's was a, a Disney yes, actor. Yes. And then she went crazy. So, she was a she's an ex, you know, she's like a what were they Mouseketeer. Mas yeah, Mouseketeer yeah. or whatever, like Britney Spears oh. and Justin Timberlake or whatever, right? Yeah. So, she was a little Mouseketeer. It's just, weird how they all go crazy, isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah right? She Christina she Aguilera. started an OnlyFans page, okay? An OnlyFans page in 2 days. Made two million dollars. Yeah. Crashed it, didn't she? Crash wow. the site, bro. Yeah. Think about how many. Uh, it's just so many creepy dudes, you know, watching. Oh, my daughter used to watch shows that, that yeah. are just like, yeah, finally. You know, and like, I and Ew. I be and I believe that's reoccurring <laughs> revenue too, because OnlyFans is a, a membership thing. It's not like you pay for it and you have access forever. She talked about she was on an interview and she she did there's this viral video of her talking about how she was uh, how it was terrible at Disney and she said got molested. Oh, I didn't know that. That's what she said. Whoa. Yes. Look it up. Look it up. Sorry. Didn't mean to bring conspiracy know, stuff go. into this. Oh, wow. Lot. I didn't know that. Yeah. She did. I just thought the whole $2 million in two days was amazing. I don't know, man. I feel like- uh, hey, How conflicted do you feel as a dad? Uh, what do you mean? Why would I be conflicted? Uh, you know, your daughter's an entrepreneur. She no, made $2 million. no, no. It's not worth that, dude. <laughs> no, yeah. There's I a lot mean, of other ways There's not enough money, money to, to, to sell yourself out that way. It's worth it. You know? uh, yeah. You know, well, I mean, what's what? And then, okay, let's play this I mean, game. It's better which, than hooking. I was going to say, what's worse? If she was hooking or she was a stripper, even, I mean, which one is which one is worse? Well, yeah, that's, that's, you that's not always fair. Play that game. Yeah. yeah you can. <laughs> <laughs> what's worse? Uh, being a psychopathic, yeah. tyrannical yeah. leader? Or? Hey, I know I'm an alcoholic, but, you yeah. know, I uh, could be a crack addict. Yeah, good point, Sal. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stick to keep that drinking. That is it worse. Up. Yeah. yeah. Keep, anyway, that's that's crazy. Two million dollars. Yeah, two million. She crashed the whole thing, though. I huh? know. I know. Hey, what's going on with sports right now? I keep reading how that they're they're, oh, they're please, tanking, dude. Please, God, don't go is here. Sports? Are you really no, gonna go here, dude, dude? Hold on. You know why I'm saying oh, this? This is a shit. So show. I don't follow it. Okay, I don't follow uh, sports. I could I could care less usually, but I have a buddy who is a hardcore Dodgers fan. Like I, when I say hardcore, I mean 
When his kids were born, that was the first thing that they wore. Dodger He's, blue. He is just die hard, win, lose, doesn't uh, matter, yeah. whatever. And the other day, he sent me a video throwing away his Dodgers <clears throat> stuff because he's so over sports just not being sports anymore and being just all – The pop. Poli- yeah. yeah. Someone like him to do that makes me think that if he's going to do that – It's yeah. been hard for me, dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I've, it's I've remained pretty quiet about it. Um just because one, here's what here's and somebody challenged me. I had someone who DM me, and I went back and forth because they're like, you know, I feel like you you avoid these questions. I'm like, no, if you ask me a direct question like you just did related to related to this, uh, I'll give my opinion on it. But I'm also not somebody who's going to make a big deal about this stuff either. So I mean, here's the deal: I support uh, freedom of speech. Uh, you have every right to uh, boycott games, to uh, stand up and say things, kneel down and do things. I support all that. I mean, if you want to do that, you can do that. I also uh, support people that decide, hey, I don't want to see that, and I don't want to watch it, and I don't want to be a part of it. And to me, that's the, the the only thing that I feel I should or should do. I don't ha- I don't have a dog in this fight to where. I feel the need to use my platform to voice my opinion on this. It's just that, well, I don't like watching the NBA right now. It's just too much for me. It's mm-hmm. oh, they've, they've gone way over the top on the political side and pushing the, the BLM thing big time. And it's at, at a point where it's like, I want I, I tune into sports to tune out the rest of this world. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Someone that's what draws yeah, me to sports. There's no escape right now anywhere. That, that's right. There's I don't feel like I get my escape by doing that. I mean, it's already enough that we, being in the, the limelight like we are, we get constant messages and we're talking about it and we're always on social and we're seeing all this stuff all the time. My but there's a huge division in half of my friends with, with the, because of all the political race going on right now. Man, I, nothing, nothing more than ever do I want to just tune into like my favorite sport, yeah. watch it, and not have any of that stuff. I just want to see the game. I love the game. Yeah. I love the yeah. game so much that that's all I want. And it's not right now. And you know what? I respect the men that want to make a point because they feel strong about something. But my way of making a point is like I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to tune in. And well, you're, you're not, not going to get my ratings. I was going to say you're not alone. I know their ratings are are terrible during a time when their ratings should be crushing because yeah. there's nothing else to do. Aren't they talking about maybe like canceling seasons they, and stuff? Well, they just so last night, uh, and this I just 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 came down. Now I am not watching, right? So I and I'm in a thread. There, there's a, a so like we our sports thread. These are my close friends that we. That's what we have most in common is sports, and we talk a lot of trash. We all have different sports teams that we like, and so I'm still somewhat in the loop of like what's going on in the NBA, but I'm not watching like I normally am because of, I'm in this thread. And uh, so I didn't even know until one of them said like, well, I guess we won't be watching any NBA games tonight. I'm like, well, what's going on? And they're like, oh yeah, the NBA is the the teams, the Lakers, the Trailblazers, the Milwaukee Bucks, and I forgot who team, the fourth team was, all decided they're Magic. not going to play. Oh yeah. oh yeah, I think it was Magic. You're right. Uh, all decided we're not going to play. So yeah. they just decided we're not going to play. And then I know LeBron came out with a tweet that said like they're considering boycotting the whole season and that they were going to just stop, potentially stop playing uh, altogether, all due to the response to the Jacob incident. <clears throat> but now news is coming out. This is not even 12 hours later from the boycott that they're all going back. And so the rumor mm. is that, you know, China has a lot of power and pull over a lot of these NBA players and are saying, you guys need to get your ass back to work or we're not going to make very much, you're not going to make money or any contribution from our end over here. And now they're going to back to play. Oh. So that's the rumor. Mm. Now I'm, like I said, disconnected because I'm not watching it as much. But I yeah, exact and this is just it. I don't want to be in all that bullshit, dude. I, know. I just want to watch the game, dude. I just want to watch. <laughs> you make you know, sports, man. All that in? You uh, make a really good point. People like they like certain forms of entertainment to get away and escape from stressful situations. This is why during stressful times, uh, superhero movies tend to do really well because superhero movies aren't talking about what's happening right now. It's a it's a fantasy world. You're watching with. Sports are like that. It, oh, it's just football. We know who wins. We know who loses. Oh, it's basketball. It's objective. We see the score. Here we go. But it, so it makes sense that that would turn well, off. Oh, I mean, you know what's interesting right now uh, to kind of uh, bring up too with the video game world. So you're talking about like versions of entertainment to go uh, as a place in terms of like I want to escape and I want to like just play this game mindlessly and all this kind of stuff. 
if you guys have have you watched the the trailer for the new Call of Duty? No. Oh, so it, it's really fascinating. It's um so it they use clips from from this this viral video from a long time ago. I don't know if it's from like the seventies or. Uh, from a while ago from this KGB, uh, ex-KGB agent that was kind of talking about how they're use- we're going to use psychological warfare like against, uh, you know, America and like the, uh, like I know you've seen this before, Sal, yeah, this, I've seen this that specific video, video but it, it goes into great detail of like how they would plan something like what we're seeing, you know, like happening uh, within our country. And it, it was interesting because it's like, I wonder, you know, if they're trying to educate people on like past historical videos and and things that have happened that people have have started to talk about these things in depth and try to explain this and like so maybe they're trying to get uh, these kids that are playing these games to kind of understand a little bit further of like what may be also a factor to all this stuff. Ooh, interesting. I yeah, was I don't know. I was watching last night too, uh, and then again I just was not a fan. Okay, so I love the show uh, Hard Knocks. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Hard Knocks mm-hmm. before, and it's on HBO. I believe does it? HBO does it or Showtime. One of those two i forget which one so hard knocks is they always they, they've been doing this now for i want to say a good seven seven eight years it's been a while now every year they follow like one nfl team like during the preseason like and it's mm. really cool it's and it's because i think it's hbo it's done really well like it's it's shot really good they mic up the players you get a lot of cool behind the scenes with the coaches and the players and the tryouts and you see the cuts of the guys like it's just a really cool for sports fanatics guys that are getting excited for the nfl you get to kind of watch this this show and it's like happening like right now this is they're going through camp right now and they 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 film it pretty close to live you're only like I want to say a week or two behind what's what's happening in real time for sports. And so uh, Katrina and I were like looking for a show. Yeah, there it is right there. They followed the LA Rams and Chargers because they're both using the same facility yeah, this year. I love Hard Knocks. So I was all excited about that. I'm like, oh, cool. We love Hard Knocks. It's already got three episodes out. Let's yeah. start to watch it. And so, you know, we watched the first two episodes the night before last. And then Katrina's like, hey, do you want to finish Hard Knocks? I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah, put it on if you want. I'm like, the whole thing is around COVID and I get it because that's a big deal right now. And like trying to navigate and figure this, but again, it just an example. Yeah, I'm so thirsty for sports that I like, <laughs> I want to see the hitting, yeah. the shit talking, the like great plays being executed. The guy who is the underdog, yeah. who's not coming, who's wearing a mask and who's not. That's, it, that's, know, that's it. It's all about guys who got, Oh shit. Another guy got it, you know? And then yeah. like, what was it like getting COVID? And you know, Oh man, I was an outcast and nobody liked me. All and, that talking. Uh, yeah. And it's, you know, the, it's the, like the, watching porn with dialogue. Oh, it's <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants to hear you talk. Come on, pizza guy. Yeah. Just take your shirt off. It yeah. is. Yeah. It is. Is and, I, and you know there's okay obviously there's a side of me that understands this is a big part of what these guys are all having to deal with this year, but it doesn't make for good television and entertainment. Not mm-hmm. for someone, at least not for me. Like I want to see what I tune into sports is exactly what I just alluded to. Like I want to see the hard hits, the great plays, the underdog the coming training, over. Yeah. yeah, the training of the athletes. The sports. Yes, okay. dude. That's what. Yeah. That's why I love the game. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like everything is about, you know, players getting in trouble for not wearing their mat. They got these little sensors that if they're not six feet apart, they vibrate and beep on them. You know, oh, one coach Lord. gets it, then it's a false negative and all oh, the stress of like this yeah. guy getting it. Like, it's just like, I was told it you, 77 uh, that, that tested positive or whatever. And then they came back and were like, oh, they were all false negatives. Oh, dude. I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. That's what happened to one of the coaches on this in hard knocks. Like, okay, first of all, one of the coaches had already got it before the season started, an older guy. Uh, so he had experience of getting it and, and tells his story of what it was like having it. Uh, then another player, uh, their whole family got it and they, they interview them. They tell their whole story, how they got it, what it was that came yeah. from their nanny. And then the whole family got it and they, who was really sick out of them. And then we recovered and we're fine. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so, yes, yeah, it's a, so it's all centered around that right now. And I feel like I'm on episode three and I can't get out of it. I'm like, dude, I just want to watch the game, dude. Oh, man. I want to so watch sports dude. so well, bad. Well, I'm going to change the subject real uh, quick and, and just you. talk about uh, Adam's balls again. Well, <laughs> I tell you what. I tell you what. Those you like balls, them or what? Oh, man. Let me tell you. They're delicious, right? They are very, very so good. Now, the okay, chocolate ones are better. I was going to say, so Jerry's made three now. She's made uh, one with the vanilla uh, protein, one with the chocolate protein, and then one with the vanilla protein, but with the, the peanut butter I chips. I like the peanut butter chips. So I like the chocolate and chocolate. Do you really? Which is not mm. normal for me. I normally don't like chocolate mm. and chocolate, but the chocolate on chocolate chip uh, balls are the best. They're no bake. Yeah, no. These are no bake. You can find so this is a recipe. You can find it on our Organifi's uh, Instagram page or their website. 
and they use their protein, and the ingredients are all very good, very clean. Macros are good. Uh, no bake, you put them in the freezer or the fridge, and then you. you it's so good, cold. and they're yeah, they're excellent. Hey, remember how we were talking about? Um, we had a conversation around college, higher education. Is it worth the cost to get a degree or not, and all that stuff? Or that yeah, whole yeah. Debate? yeah. So I found a, uh, a an article. Actually, someone sent me this article because of that episode. And the title of it is, uh, These Are the Most Regretted College Majors. And then they also have the Least Regretted College Majors. Oh, uh, that's interesting. So, interesting, right? So as of right now, here are some of the five most regretted- Get ready to trigger. College majors. Here. Okay. <laughs> Ornamental <laughs> horniculture. Yeah. No, number one, English and foreign language uh, majors. Um, and is most regrettable. Number one, because people say it's impractical, has limited job opportunities. You could basically be a teacher. Another one said is biological and physical sciences. Now I thought that's interesting, but the reason why they say is because that there's not much of a benefit in getting an advanced degree in addition to their bachelor's. So it's mm. like bachelor, but then after that, not much to do. Mm. Education, believe it or not, degree in education, because it said there were limited job opportunities. Social sciences and law, again, too general and practical communications, uh, too wow. general. And then the five least regretted majors. Number one, you guys want to guess? Something doctor. Uh, yeah. Computer science and mathematics. Uh, yeah, like engineering that. or something. Yeah, they yeah. said that they loved it. Business, they said it was really good. Yeah, business is great. Engineering in general, really good. Health administration there and assisting. Go. And then health sciences and technologies. Those. So as of right now, those are the those are the majors that most so doctor people, engineer. What else did you? What was uh, a, computer science? No, no law or like lawyer. No, the yeah. law was actually one of the more regretted one, one of the more regretted ones. I yeah. think if you get a law degree, but you don't go and get the you know become a lawyer. Well, yeah. Then you're yeah. You're saying, the, this is too hard. Yeah. <laughs> then what? Sucks. You, <laughs> yeah. Or like me, you know, you yeah. want, you're like, well, I gotta read all those books. I know. Yeah. Like it's so boring. <laughs> I'll get the degree, but I don't want to read. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to read. I just want the yeah. I want the little yeah, let's piece leave of paper that, one that says I'm good. Hey, I read a funny uh, funny uh, article the other day. So, you know Google Maps, how you can go on there, type in an address, get the street view, yeah. and kind of see what's going on? Yeah. Okay. You guys ever look at your house and see yeah, what's... Yeah, okay. sometimes. So I guess some guy went on there, and uh, I think he looked up his address and saw uh, some strange car in his driveway and his wife outside with <gasps> some guy. No. <laughs> yeah. no. Caught, her, caught her cheating, dude. On Google Maps. With Google Maps. Dude. No way. Caught her cheating. Now, how did that work? Because it's Whoa. not real time. Not real time, but it's relatively recent. Because that's even worse, right? He just happened to be checking it one day. It wasn't even when she was actually the day she's cheated. She cheated like fucking five months ago, and that's because right. it's an old image. I, yeah, I don't know how hey. old it was, but he's it's he, pretty old. I, he, I know, I, or at least when I looked it up and I checked my house, like the, I remember seeing a car parked in like the driveway or whatever. I'm like, oh, that was like months ago. Like you get that so, pixelated street view. Yeah, know? it's definitely not like up to date. No, he saw there was a picture of her with this man, and they were like kind of the way they were standing with each other. They're, apparently. Was embracing. like he's like something's that's going not, on. That's not me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't drive that. Hey, that's Sean. Yeah. That was my home inspector. Yeah. yeah. Why is he grabbing her? Uh, anyway, yeah. so yeah. he caught her cheating through Google Maps. Oh, I know. That what, what a way to find out. Yeah. First question is from Jamelia one forty four. What is the most chronically undertrained muscle group for most people? Calves. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, undertrained muscle group for most people. Back. In, I would say properly. No, I was kind of thinking rhomboid. Properly, um, core properly. Uh, okay, yeah, there you yeah. go. You know, core. A lot of people work out their core, and I'll say in quotations because they want their abs to look good. But very rarely do you run into anybody who does proper core work. I mean, here's a good example, right? Um, when physio ball, uh, physio ball started becoming a staple in the gym, I would see people in the gyms that I would manage do a million. Physio ball crunches, and I never saw anybody do them properly. In fact, yeah, it was one of the most effective ways I sold personal training. I'd walk up to them, and I'd be like, "Oh, how many reps can you do?" And people always excited to tell you that they could do fifty. Yeah. I'd be like, "Oh, that's wow! You could do fifty of them." And they're rolling their hips up and like folding their, their, their body head. forward. Oh yeah. yeah, and so I'd say, "Okay, can I show? Let me see if you can. Can you do them a different way? Let me show you." And then I would show them how to do it properly, and they do like five. They're like, oh my God, I feel that totally different. Mm -hmm. And it's because most people don't work their core properly because most people, even if we just talk about abs, for example, all they know is if you fold the body in half, you're working your abs. That's what they think. They don't realize that folding the body in half can mean hip flexors and not abs. So I would show people <clears throat> proper ways to activate and 
work, uh, you know, parts of the core, and then it would blow them away. So that that's I'd say for me, I, probably I, one of those. I ones. agree with that. Although I would make the case for back too, though. I really because first of all, I don't think anybody trains the posterior chain enough. I mean, or yeah. for the most yeah. part, like at least ninety plus percent of the population, just because we, we're so anteriorly driven, we do everything in front of us. You just don't do anything with your hands behind you, except so. for ask for snacks from your kids. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, right, or, or wipe yeah. your butt, right. That's about it. Everything else is done in front of you most of the time, and so. Even if you do exercise and train, we're still so so driven in front of us, so rounded forward. So and and then when you do see somebody who trains and works out and they try and train their back, most people don't know how to engage their back. Most people pull with their arms mm -hmm. and they still have the the rolled forward shoulders when they row. I mean, at least in my experience, in most of the clients that I helped. If I sat somebody, even if you had some experience in lifting, and I sat you into a seated row or a bent over row and I asked you to do it, almost all of them didn't uh, know how to retract the shoulder. Sure. They, they were always still in this protracted. They could look at somebody else doing a seated row and sit up tall and straight, and they could pull in with their arms and try and emulate what they saw, but they didn't know how to really engage the back, which is very common because if you're always doing everything in front of you and you're never doing nothing back there, it's hard to work that. So... I think the back, the posterior chain in general is just maybe hamstrings you, you can make a good case for yeah. too. It's probably the most underdeveloped or chronically uh, undertrained. Mm. Yeah, I could make it an, an argument for rotators, uh, you know, mm. shoulders, uh, mainly because I think that if, even if you're a gym minded person, like you're constantly lifting weights and you're doing it all like in the sagittal plane, you're not really working outside of that and you're not really expressing rotation uh, as it should, uh, which which then inevitably leads to to problems, you know, in the shoulder. Even if you are working on yourself, like you you neglect uh, that aspect of function that that joint can provide. So uh, I think that's why I'm always like uh, like bringing that up uh, constantly, just because I just don't see it unless it's very intentionally programmed in there to where somebody's going to put that in. Because nothing like like any of the machines that you're going to find are really going to have that uh, uh, you know available for that. Now that being said, I mean this is this is the type of stuff, and I like. Questions like this because these are the types of things that we would think about when we were putting together programs. And when we originally first did the first three, and then we didn't have all the other ones, like they were designed for you to go through all of them uh, consecutively. You're mm -hmm. supposed to go through MAPS anabolic, MAPS performance, and MAPS aesthetic. It's basically nine months of programming. And in there, we address all these things. There's a there's a major uh, component in there to, uh, to posterior chain. There's a major component to unilateral movement, rotational exercises, ab workout. There is a component to all these things that we think that the majority of people are, uh, you know, chronically under training right. to make sure that they they address that through all the. If you go through all that, so you know, if you're a listener and you're coming in for the first time, like. That this is the way they were. Des they were designed for most people to follow that anabolic performance that a state. Does that mean you have to do that? You can't start with another program or go different? No, of course not. But when we wrote them, we wrote them with these types of thoughts into consideration. We thought about the average person. What do they neglect the most? And what do they need to be doing? Or what are they most like? What mistakes are they most likely to make when putting together a program or starting their training? And then how do we address that in, in, a, in a program? Yeah, I know there's a couple things too to consider just because modern lifestyle now involves a lot of sitting and a lot of looking at screens and a lot of typing. Um, I remember seeing this transition working in gyms where more and more people were coming in with forward head, neck issues, and uh, wrist issues. Not from overuse, but rather from underuse. And I've fixed and helped a lot of people solve things like uh, what, like the wrist issues or their, you know, what's it called when they when you have wrist issues when you work on computers all the time? Carpal tunnel. There you go, carpal tunnel syndrome. Because their hands uh, were overstressed in one direction, not strength in another, and very weak. And so believe it or not, something that I never thought I would do or I didn't consider when I first became a trainer that actually became important was training people's hands and wrists. Mm -hmm. I would do a lot of hand and wrist training with people to solve some of these issues. People have chronically weak hands and chronic uh, dysfunction in the way their wrists and hands operate because of what we do all day long and how we don't strengthen them. So those are two other areas you might want to consider. Next question is from Phoebe's Cray K. I just did a week of steep mountain trekking and realized I have undertrained endurance. I currently lift weights three to six days a week. How do I program endurance or uphill trekking training into my workouts without sacrificing muscle growth? 
Is this possible? So one of my one of the best ways I can illustrate kind of what I'm about to communicate is like when you play a video game and you pick your character. So you got the character on the screen. Right. And then next to the character, there's all these attributes, right? Yeah. It's like strength, stamina, speed, strength, speed, strength, you know, whatever, stamina, mm. you know, flexibility. Resiliency. Resilience. Yeah. And you can adjust each one. But if you move one more over to make it stronger, you take away from the other ones. Right. That kind of represents uh, your body's physical performance. The more endurance I train for, the less maximal strength I'm going to have. Okay, so th those tend to be, although they can help each other, sometimes they can be inversely related, especially when you start to look for high levels of performance. So if you're tr if you're like really into resistance training and it's all about muscle and strength, a little bit of endurance is going to help you. You need to have enough endurance to be able to perform your resistance training exercises. But if you start to train for more endurance or endurance gets gonna, that's going to give you stamina for endurance-related activities like trekking or cycling or running, you're probably going to take away a little bit of your ability to gain strength and muscle. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's whatever you prefer. Some people like to be extreme in one and not in the other. Some, there's, there's power lifters that like to be super, super strong, could care less about being able to run a mile or hike 15 miles or whatever. Um, and then there's the opposite. There's people that, look, they just want to be able to cycle for 50 miles and really don't care about squatting 300 pounds. So, and then there's people who like to be somewhere in the middle or a mix of them. You have to decide for yourself what's going to give you the best quality of life, what do you enjoy, and train accordingly. Now, based off of what you said, you lift weights three to six days a week. If you lift weight three days, uh, th weights three days a week, then two days a week of trekking – it's Pretty fine. Good, yeah. Yeah. If you lift, if you want to do more stamina, then I would go three days of trekking, two days of weights, or four days of trekking, one day of weights. You know, then that's mostly endurance, right? So that's kind of how you want to measure it out. Six days a week of resistance training, you're not going to have much room to really train uh, lots of stamina endurance. It, you you might run the risk of overdoing it if you do that. But at the end of the day, you do have to assess like how much you're willing to sacrifice in in those two different pursuits because they are different. And uh, like you highlighted, it's 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 one of those things where uh, I, I know people want to have it all. And, you know, I want to be super lean, but I want to be humongous and jacked like all, all at the same time. And I want to be able to uh, sprint, you, you know, uh, a one minute mile, whatever, like whatever. the Wow. Yeah, it's really fast. Um, <laughs> that was a great example. Um, you know, there's some people out there that might want that. You know, like, uh, that would be pretty cool, actually. Uh, but yeah, you, you. But the thing is, like, you're always going to be sacrificing on, on one end of the spectrum versus the other uh, in order to get closer to the the specific goal that you have. So you just have to be a little more specific with your goal and understand, uh, you know, what that outcome looks like. I, I really think it's. Um, our own insecurities about our body and stuff that keeps us uh, from committing one way or the other. Yeah, or enjoying it. Yeah, right. So I love this. Like, I, I, I don't know. Out of the three of us, I probably move the most out of modalities, I think, uh, out of us. Man, we all do it pretty good, but I think I, I do this a lot. He's got commitment I, issues. Eh, I'm just better. <laughs> no, no yeah. I, I just like to, yeah, I'm just, I'm just better at this, you know? Yeah. So, no, what I mean by that is like, you will uh, you'll see m uh, my body change a lot because of what I'm focused on, and um, you know whether it was swimming for a while, or mobility, or chasing Sal for PRs, or getting on a stage and presenting my physique. I mean, all four of those are extremely different goals, and if I put a lot of energy in any of them, they take away from the other three. Yeah, and so uh, I, and instead of like kind of you know, putting one foot in and one foot out in each one of them, I just fully commit. Like, I'm going to be the mobility guy. And part of being the mobility guy is I don't give two shits what I look like on stage or if Sal can out deadlift me. That's not part of the goal. The goal is I want to become the most mobile version of myself, and so my commitment goes all there. And do I know that doing that, I'm going to not look as aesthetic as I did as a bodybuilder or be as strong as I was trying to chase Sal with deadlifts? Of course. But that's not the goal right now. The goal, and what I know is that overall, when you look at your uh, your training journey, not just this small focus for six months or a year or whatever you decide to do it, over the total journey, they they all really really help each other, and it's all going to complement my overall fitness. It's not like I can't go after, like I can't, I can be a mobility guy like hardcore for a whole year, lose a bunch of that you know sexy muscle, lose a bunch of that strength, and then all of a sudden after that year, go all right. 
Now I want to go after being strong as hell again, and it'll actually really benefit me. I'll probably mm -hmm. feel a lot better. I may even reach a new PR going back to it. It's okay, and it's and I think you're better off when you set new goals like this is committing to it. It's just a healthy relationship with, with your body and with exercise. You're having fun with it, really, is, is what it's all about. Whatever that means for you, I think that's the important message here. Whatever it means to you, have fun with it and enjoy it because – what you're looking at is a lifetime of fitness. You know, you it, that you made a great point, Adam. You said, don't look at it like su such a short period. Totally true. You know, if you're lucky and blessed, you're going to live a long life. And in that long life, or part of living a long life, is being active, taking care of your body. Stop looking at things so, so narrow-minded. Will you lose a little bit of strength and muscle if you start to focus on trekking? Maybe. Probably a little bit, but guess what? You'll get better at trekking. You'll enjoy something else, yeah, and you're gonna be health. You're gonna be you're not gonna be less healthy, right? You know what I'm saying? Like right. going after all these different pursuits aren't are gonna make you healthier by changing it up. You're you'll be healthier than the person who's always trying to do the same thing and fighting with their body, like oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But I'm not afraid to go. I'm too afraid to go too far in this direction in fear I might lose a little bit of muscle or lose a little bit of strength. It's okay. Like overall, you're you're being active and you're 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 seeking novelty and you're changing things up and you're challenging your body. Uh, like these are all good stresses that you're adding, and you're only going to get better overall, and, and it's only going to improve your lifelong journey. of It makes life more interesting. Right. Next question is from BJ Sayer: What actually constitutes processed foods? Is protein powder processed? How about protein bars or yogurt? Where do you draw the line? Okay, so great question. I actually got in a huge uh, debate once yeah. in my- All nuance. In my yeah. wellness studio. <laughs> so back in the day, I had a, a wellness studio and there were other trainers in there and we had massage therapists, acupuncturists, and I had some nutrition people and physical therapists. And essentially, it would, the goal was you come in here and you, you know kind of one-stop shop type of deal. But we had this wonderful environment because it was a small facility- I would be in there training a client and there might be four other trainers with clients. We're all doing our own thing, but we would have all these cross discussions across the gym and these wonderful debates and everybody was super open and it was really, really fun. And I would always rant and rave about avoiding processed foods, just like I do on the podcast, right? I would talk about how processed foods encourage overeating, uh, how they tend to promote poor health and, uh, and all that stuff. Well, anyway, one of my other trainers' clients worked <clears throat> in the food industry. He actually owned a plant that got prunes or make, got plums, dried them, turned them into prunes, and then sold them and packaged them. And I remember I was talking about processed foods. I was telling my client, avoid heavily processed foods. They promote overeating. They do this and that. And then he pipes up and he goes, oh yeah, name one food that isn't processed. Mm. I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? And he goes, uh, a steak is processed. They have to cut it out. They have to put it in the, in the package. They have to make sure that it doesn't have, that there's certain cuts, this and that. He goes, I process food. He goes, I sell prunes, but the prunes have to go in the package. I have to process them. It has to go through the plant. And I said, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. 99% uh, of the food that you're going to eat, unless you grow it yourself. Actually, in fact, even if you grow it, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, you have to process it somewhat, right? You got to pick it out of the ground, wash it, cut certain parts off, that's all considered processing. So let's get a little bit more specific. Yeah. I've heard the same argument for GMO, but keep going. Yeah, so let's get a little bit more specific, okay? When we talk about processed foods, what we're talking about are foods that typically have more than one or two or three ingredients. They come in a box. They come in a wrapper. It's not a steak. When you look at a steak, the ingredients are steak. When I look at a banana, the ingredients are banana. But if I look at banana-flavored candy – or uh, you know some like a meat flavored whatever or meat product like sausage, then you see all these different ingredients and this whole process that is designed to make the food as palatable as pro as possible. Most of the money that goes into heavily processed foods that's why I don't say processed anymore. I say heavily processed food goes into uh, dramatically increasing the palatability of the food. Now, why can that be a bad thing? It can be a bad thing because that makes us overeat. We now finally have studies to support this. On average, people eat 500 more calories a day from eating heavily processed food. That's uh, pounds of body fat a month on your body. That's not a little bit. 500 calories is not a small bump. 
and it's consistent across all the studies. They're double blind, they're crossover studies, they're controlled, they're very, very good. I've experienced it with clients. So that's the thing. Now, protein powder is extremely processed, okay? You're eating protein that came from what? I don't know, whey, plants, now it tastes like chocolate cake. Yeah, of course it's heavily processed. Um, now here's a deal, use it for what it's good for. I didn't get enough protein in my diet today. It's convenient. It doesn't come with fat and carbs, so I can hit my calories. Here I go. I'll take this protein shake. But if all you did was take protein shakes and make foods out of protein, like we talked about the peanut butter balls and protein bars, you probably would also be overeating. You probably would find yourself having a tendency to overeat because those foods are also designed uh, to be hyper palatable. Now, I'm not going to put them in the same categories like potato chips and that kind of stuff because they part of their goal is to be high protein and somewhat healthy, so they have some limitations. But yes, those are considered processed. Uh, minimally processed foods, yogurt. You can get minimally processed yogurt, plain. Um, it doesn't have a whole you know, listen, slew of ingredients. Listen, so. listen, listen. I mean, we Linda. start going down. Yeah, listen, Linda. It's going down this the rabbit hole. Is, I, I got somebody who, who DM'd me after... Uh, one of my, you know, question things that I do on my Instagram story and uh, somebody asked about Magic Spoon and so Magic Spoon came up and they're like, you know, I thought you guys are uh, uh, anti-processed foods. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Anti-processed foods. Like there's there's not a day that goes by that I don't have something that is somewhat processed to your point. Everything is. But my goal always is to try and eat as much whole foods as I possibly can and and minimize how much things I ingest that are processed. It's just that simple. It's not it's not that it's a mindset. It's not that complicated and there's not a line we're not drawing a line in the sand of these are all good foods or these are all bad foods. It's understanding that foods are engineered to make you want to eat tons of them. Listen, we're we're sponsored by lots of brands like protein powders and and cereals that have that are processed foods. If you found yourself, if you called me up and you said uh, you're a client of mine, and you said, Adam, I can't stop eating this magic spoon. I'm eating four boxes a day. Should I keep eating it because it's healthy and it's good for me? So just use the just use the mind pump code. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I would say no, absolutely not. If you if if you're abusing it, you know, just like you could abuse the the protein powder. Then we have an issue. And if I have a choice as your trainer, if you said, hey, Adam, I'm thinking about sitting down and having six ounces of steak with some white rice and a cup of broccoli, or I was thinking about pouring a bowl of Magic Spoon, what would you rather me do? What the fuck do you think I'm going to say? I'm going to tell the person I'd much rather them eat that meat. But at the same time, if I if they were going to if they weren't going to get up and make themselves steak rice and broccoli and they were craving something sweet and they're watching TV and they were thinking about getting up and go eating a box of cookies... And instead, they go grab a bowl of Magic Spoon. I would much rather see that. So it's really just the awareness of what you're doing. And be aware that when the more processed it is, the more palatable it's probably going to be and the more susceptible you're going to be to over-consuming. And it's your job to be disciplined enough to be aware of that and know when you're abusing it. And I understand that a lot of people are not very aware. And so become aware of which ones are really processed. What is the difference between heavily processed foods and what is the difference between whole foods? Everybody's goal should be to get as much whole foods as possible. But I would be a total hypocrite if I drew a line in the sand and said, these are bad foods and these are good foods. And I only recommend whole foods because that's not how I live. Yeah. And you also have to understand that processed foods also have a lot of value. One thing that processed foods do very well is they have long shelf life. There is a lot of value in that, especially when you're transporting food long distances, when people need to store food. If there's an emergency, um, it's extremely efficient. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great quality. Also, there's nothing wrong with enjoying hyper-palatable food. That's a, that's a part of life. You know, Just don't do it the wrong way. I mean, there's a difference between mindlessly eating food and, my, and eating food in a mindful way. It's very different. One looks like binging. The other one looks like enjoying every bite, savoring it, and enjoying the company around you. Two very, very different things. Hyper palatable, uh, heavily processed foods. If you're aware of, uh, of, of the potential effects on you, and if you try to minimize how many of them you consume, you're doing a pretty damn good job. If you're not aware, like most people, and they make up a bulk of your nutrition, it's going to be very difficult to eat the right amount of food and calories and to hit the right macros and even just eat in a healthy way. It's going to be very, very difficult because those foods, if you're not aware, will make you overeat in a big way.
Next question is from Cassidy Hoffman Official. Do you think that gluttony is a fair criticism of Christianity? Have you seen clients or others use faith to battle gluttony? Mm. Wow. Hey, Cassidy's official now. That's good news. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll go with the second part first, which is have you seen clients or others use faith to battle gluttony? Okay, so when you look at studies on diets or particular ways of eating, what you find is a very high failure rate. I think it's something like 80-something percent of people who go on a diet totally fail, even if their intentions are good. I want to lose weight. I want to improve my health. It often is those kinds of intentions, and they fail very high. However, when people embark on a diet for moral or spiritual or faith-based reasons, okay, the success rate is very high. So let's talk about let's 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 step out of Christianity for a second. I'll address that, but let's step step out there for a second. Let's look at vegans. Vegans who become vegans because they're trying to improve their health, high failure rate. Vegans who become vegans because they believe it's moral right. to not eat animals, very high success rate. You look at the Seventh Day Adventists. This is a, a a offset kind of Christian group that eats in a particular way based off their faith, or look at... Mormons. Pe- Mormons. Mormons don't have soda. They don't have... Yeah, a lot of things. Right. They're very, very good with it. Why? Because they're eating in a way that goes beyond themselves. This is the this is the mental aspect of it, right? I'm not just doing this for me. I'm doing this for this moral reason that's bigger than myself, whether it be for the benefit of animals, or maybe it be a god, my god, this is why I eat this way, because God mm. tells me to, or because my body's a temple. God says, take care of my temple. Whatever it is... Faith behind or or moral reasons behind your choices, just from a psychological standpoint, is more is is one of the most powerful ways people can make changes in their life. And but you know, look at the twelve steps to quitting drugs and alcohol. It's based on uh, religion. I think it's a if in fact I believe it's a Christian application, and it has it one of the higher success rates because it, because of that that morality that goes behind it. Now to the first part, do I think gluttony is a fair criticism of Christianity? You know, I was an atheist for a long time, and one of my biggest criticisms of all religion was how imperfect people who followed religions were. The hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. I would walk into a church. You know, my family was Catholic, so even though I was atheist, I'd go to family events and stuff, and I'd sit in there just looking around. You know, oh, look at that person. They're over here, you know, doing their thing, and I I know that person, and they're so not perfect. I know that person's so not perfect. I know Mm -hmm. that person's so not perfect. Mm -hmm. And um, once I flipped that on myself— it's like going to the gym. Imagine going to the gym, looking at all these people working out, and then saying to yourself, look at all these fat people. They don't really believe in what they're doing. I know they eat bad. They're in here working. Yeah. Well, they're the, trying. The reality is, yeah. like, man, there ain't a single perfect person in this world. Everybody struggles with everything. And gluttony, as defined in Christianity, essentially is eating a lot of food or in being excess. greedy. Um, at the uh, at the detriment of somebody who's needy. In other words, I'm eating so much food and I I'm, I'm just stuffing myself, even though there's people around me that need food. That's kind of the definition of gluttony. Well, you know what? Look in the mirror. If you have more than one pair of shoes, one pair of pants, a shirt, if you have a roof, uh, you are. I guess I could call you that kind of a person as well, right? Because there's so many people that could need those things. Nobody's perfect, so. Yeah, I mean, this is an interesting question because, uh, I mean, I did grow up a lot in the culture of church and, like, I had my own fair share of criticisms about just the culture in general uh, just by observing a lot and being in the back and uh, not feeling like I was ever, like, in the community. I was in the community. I was out of the community because it was there was a lot of the judgmental stuff that came, but it was, the, you know, hypocritical in some of these aspects. Like, even this one being mentioned, there was not a lot of emphasis on health practices and having healthy, uh, you know, practices involved and wrapped into uh, all these other parts of, of faith-based practices. And so I, I, I was always curious about why that wasn't highlighted, uh, you know, as strongly as all these other values uh, that they're promoting within church. But again, it, it was just a reflection of the culture where I was. So if I was in the Midwest and I'm, uh, you know, in, in a church there where it was very much like the, the culture that I was around was was into potlucking and into all these, like, like they showed love by providing food for everybody. And so this became like part of the thing where it was like, we all come here, we we eat and, and we, we share and, uh, you know, and, and it's a way that they show love. And so it's, it's, 
it again, it's it's from an outside perspective, you could pick apart like sort of any uh, organization uh, that that you can you could find holes in something that uh, I feel like. Um, you know, like you're going to find that in any organization that you're going to look into that that deeply. Well, the you know the Bible addresses your your both your points in uh, Matthew seven five, right? It's the you know, pull the plank out of your own eye before you pull the sliver out of somebody else's, yeah, right? So it addresses that exact thing. And I think I struggled with this too, being a fitness professional in like my early twenties, like seeing the same thing and the hypocrisy. That was I was still in my twenties, going through a lot of anger, animosity towards my family and how I was raised. And so I had a lot of bitterness I was dealing with. And I, I judged the same way. I looked at these people and thought, oh, they talk about all these other things that they're trying to focus on and be good. And yet here they are poisoning their body. And that's considered one of the seven day, deadly sins and yada, yada, yada. I also think that we are in a the middle of a kind of shift because there is, there is that starting to happen now. Like, uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are with churches and Christianity and, and, and other religions too are, are starting to follow suit. We, this is just, this is relatively new when you compare it to, to religion. A hundred years ago, religions weren't having to speak to gluttony very much. There was a scarcity of food. That's true. Not yeah. a lot of people were abusing this. That's so true. we, we in, in our lifetime, we have seen a major shift. I mean, processed foods have really hit the scene just in the last 20 to 30 years. This hasn't been something very long that people have been ob obesity is like skyrocketed mm. just recently that's a great point when you compare it to religion that's been taught for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years this is something that this is a new battle and you are seeing some churches and yeah. some religions starting to address it and i just don't think they ever had to and not, yeah not to mention the misinformation they're getting from the standards uh you know for nutrition given from right. the government it's right. like you know where do you get the information that's all like we weren't the general public wasn't even receiving it so. well i'll say this okay greed is a is always been with people it's always been a problem. Doesn't matter how much or little you have or what system of government you have, whatever. Greedy people exist. Greed is uh, it's it's something that we all need to contend with. All of us suffer from some degree of it, of course. Especially if you live in this country, um, it's I can very easily make the case that you're greedy comparing you to somebody else somewhere else in the world. Now the religions. Here's the deal. Okay, fitness has been something I've been studying for a long time. Religion. I've learned it mainly because I started out as an atheist. Now it's a little different. And here's what I found that was very interesting. In all the major religions, they all talk about greed and fasting in some way, shape, or form is embedded in every single religion. Fasting was a way for these religions to teach people or themselves how to be without. Yeah, how to abstain. How to detach, how to abstain. So they have been having some of these conversations about gluttony and greed. That's been around for a very long time. But Adam makes an excellent point. We haven't had, like, obesity really hasn't been an issue. If you look at the whole history of the church, thousands of years, yeah. it's the last, what, 50 yeah. that we're dealing with, you know, with obesity. It's, yeah, it's relatively new. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, uh, I think it's fair to criticize uh, anybody's practice, so long as you do it objectively with reason. But I don't think it's fair to... Uh, isolate it or to, to one specific practice. I don't think it's a Christian thing or a, you know, a Judaism thing or Islamic thing or Buddhist thing. It's a human thing. Uh, we deal with it all yeah. the time. It is a part of human nature to take more than you need and to overindulge. It's not just with food. It happens with technology. It happens with sex. It happens with drugs. It happens with money. It happens with uh, you know attention from other people. Um, it's just a human trait that we're always going to need to contend with. And I do think it's important that you become aware of it because happiness, you know, that I'm starting to learn now as I get older is on the other side of that. <clears throat> happiness comes from detachment, not from uh, attachment. Um, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out, uh, Mind Pump Podcast on YouTube. You can also find all of us on Instagram. By the way, Doug has an Instagram page. He does a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. So if you want to learn about podcasting, you want to see how the show is being made, follow Doug at Mind Pump Doug on Instagram. Then if you want to find your hosts, you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. The number one goal with mobility training is to improve your coordination and connection to ranges of motion. Yeah. Okay, The goal is not to build muscle. The goal is not necessarily to get 
uh, crazy strength gains. Now, more mobility leads to building more muscle and more strength gains, but the goal of mobility training is not.